Chapter 1 Scarlet Hurts? It hurts. My head hurts? That strange dream filled with whispers quickly broke up, and Joe Mingrui only felt his head throbbing, as if he had been severely beaten with a stick. No, it was more like a sharp object stabbed into the temple and accompanied by agitation. GRRR, in a daze, Joe Mingrui wanted to turn over, wanted to cover his head, wanted to sit up, but he could not move his hands and feet, and his body seemed to lose control. It seems that I am not really awake, still in the dream. Maybe there will be a situation where you think you have woken up, but you are actually still sleeping. No stranger to similar encounters, Joe Mingrui tried to concentrate his will to completely rid himself of the shackles of darkness and psychedelia. However, when half asleep and half awake, the will is always drifting like smoke, difficult to control, difficult to retract. No matter how hard he tries, he still can't help thinking divergent, distracting thoughts emerge. Perfectly fine, in the middle of the night, how can you have a headache? And the pain is sabad, it's not a cerebral hemorrhage, or anything, is it? Shit, I'm not gonna die young, am I? Wake up, wake up, oh. It doesn't hurt as much, does it? But it's still like a dull knife, slowly cutting in my head. I can't go back to sleep. How are we gonna get to work tomorrow? What else do you want to work for? Have a real headache? Of course, is to ask for leave. Don't be afraid of manager Rory. Think of it this way, it seems not bad, ah. Uh. Hey, hey, steal half a day of floating life leisure. A burst of pain let Joe Mingrui drip accumulation of illusory power. And finally, he worked hard to open his eyes, completely out of the state of half asleep. The line of sight was blurred and then covered with a faint crimson. And as far as the eye could reach, Joe Mingrui saw a log-colored desk in front of him, with an open note in the center. The paper was rough and yellow, and he looked up and wrote a word with strange letters. The ink was deep black and striking. To the left of the notebook, near the edge of the table, there is a neat stack of books, about seven or eight books. And the wall to their right is inlaid with gray pipes and wall lamps connecting with the pipes. The lamp has a western classical style, about half the size of an adult's head, with a transparent glass inner layer and a black metal enclosure outside. At the angle below the extinguished wall lamp, a black ink bottle is shrouded in pale red light, and the surface of the floating convex form a vague angel pattern. In front of the ink bottle, on the right side of the notebook, a dark pen with a rounded belly lay quietly, its tip shimmering, its cap resting next to a brash-colored revolver. A pistol, a revolver. Joe Mingrui was stunned. What he saw in front of him was so strange that it did not look anything like his room. At the same time, he found that the desk, the notebook, the ink bottle, the revolver were covered with a layer of scarlet veil, which was the light shining from the window. Unconsciously, he lifted his head and looked up a little, in midair. Above a black velvet curtain, a red full moon hung high, shining serenely. It's, Joe Mingrui was terrified and suddenly stood up, but his legs were not completely straightened and his head was throbbing again, which made him lose his strength for a short time, and his center of gravity could not help falling, and his butt severely hit the hardwood chair. Pa! That pain did not affect. Joe Mingrui pressed his hand on the table, stood up again, turned his body in a panic, and looked at his environment. It was a small room, with brown doors on either side, and a wooden high-low bed, next to the opposite wall. Between it and the left door was a cupboard with five drawers under it. At the edge of the cabinet, a man's height, there are also gray and white pipes embedded in the wall. But it is connected to a strange mechanism, a few exposed gears and bearings. Near the right corner of the desk are stacked with things that look like coal stoves and kitchen utensils, such as stockpots and iron pots. Beyond the right door is a mirror with two cracks, and the pattern of the wooden base is simple and plain. 
With a glance, Jiao Ming Grui vaguely saw himself in the mirror, his present self. Black hair, brown eyes, linen shirt, thin body, ordinary features, deep outline. It's Jiao Ming Grui suddenly inhaled a breath of cold. The heart emerged a lot of helpless and messy speculation. Revolvers, European and American classical flavor layout. And that round of crimson moon is very different from the earth. All shows something. I'm, I'm not going back in time, am I? Jiao Ming Grui opened his mouth a little bit. He grew up reading online, often fantasizing about it. But when he really encountered it, it was difficult to accept. This is probably the so-called Yi Gong Hao Dragon, right? After dozens of seconds, Jiao Ming Grui made fun of himself. If the pain in his head had not persisted, making his thoughts tight and clear, he would surely have suspected that he was dreaming. Calm, calm, calm. Taking a few deep breaths, Joe tried not to panic. At this time, with the harmony of his body and mind, a memory fragment suddenly jumped out, slowly presented in his mind. Clyde Moretti, native of Tingen, Ahoa County, Kingdom of Ruin in the North Mainland, a recent history graduate of Hoi University. His father was a staff sergeant in the Royal Army, who died in the colonial conflict in the South Continent. And the pension in exchange gave Klein the opportunity to attend a private grammar school, laying the foundation for his admission to university. Her mother, a night goddess devotee, died the year Klein passed Hoy's college entrance exams. There was also a brother and a sister who shared a two-bedroom apartment. The family is not rich, even can be said to be not good. All rely on the import and export company as a clerk brother to maintain. As a graduate of the Department of History, Klein mastered the ancient Fusak language, which is known as the source of the scripts of the northern continents. And the Hermitian script, which is often found in ancient tombs and is related to sacrifice and prayer. Hermesvin, Joming grew his heart moved, reached out to hold down the Throb Temple, looked at the notes spread out on the desk, only to feel that the line of text on the yellowed paper. From strange to strange, from strange to familiar, from familiar to decipherable. Those are words written in her mission. This is what the dark, dripping ink says, Every Onis, including me. Ooh, ooh. Joe Ming grew in inexplicable panic. Body instinct back. Trying to distance with the notebook and this line of text. He was very weak. Almost fell. Panicked to hold down the edge of the table. Only feel the air around have become restless. The edge of the ear faintly have a fine whisper in the reverberation. A kind of childhood listening to the elders tell a horror story feeling. Shaking his head, everything was just an illusion. Joe Ming Grui regained his footing, looked away from the notebook, and gasped for breath. Then his eyes fell upon the gleaming brass revolver, and a question arose in his mind. With Klein's family, where did she have the money or access to buy a handgun? Joe Ming Grui couldn't help frowning. In meditation, he suddenly found that the edge of the desk more than half a red handprint. The color is deeper than the moon, than the light goss thicker. That's a bloody handprint. Bloody handprints? Joe Ming Rui subconsciously opened the right hand that had just held down the edge of the table, looked down, and saw that the palm and fingers were covered with blood. At the same time, the throbbing pain in his head continued to come, slightly diminished, continuous. You're not going to break your head, Jo Ming Grui wondered as he turned his body and walked toward the cracked mirror. A few steps later, a figure of medium stature, dark hair and brown eyes, with an obvious bookish style, clearly caught his eyes. This is who I am now, Klein Moretti? Jo Ming Grui startled for a moment, because there was not enough light in the middle of the night to see clearly. So he continued to move forward, until he was only one step away from hitting the mirror. He turned his head to check his forehead in the light of the bright red moon. The mirror clearly reflected the truth, a terrible wound on the temple. 
the edge of the burn marks, surrounded by blood, and inside the gray brain slowly wriggling. 